Hello, this is Dana. Is it Brassavola nodosa blooming time in December? Well, it is for me. Join me at the Orchid Hut as we discuss this featured orchid. Welcome back everyone. Well, yes, it is a little bit unusual, but my Brassavola nodosa is blooming in December. And since this is a first time bloomer for me, um, I'm making a featured orchid video for this species orchid. Now first, we're going to talk a little bit about this orchid in general. And then I will talk a little bit more about how I have been growing it and how I have successfully gotten it to bloom for me in my environment. So this epiphytic orchid is native to Mexico, Central America, and the northern part of South America, um, and the West Indies. So it is a orchid that prefers uh, a warm growing environment. It um, is considered to be a pretty tough orchid, uh, so it's easy to grow, and it is often also called the Lady of the Night orchid and my particular spike has three buds on it. So the bloom is predominantly white with a little bit of light green. So this orchid is referred to as the Lady of the Night Orchid because that is when it gives off um, a very strong fragrance to attract moths that come out at night to pollinate the flowers. The scent is described as a white floral with a little bit of citrus mixed in, so sort of a citrusy gardenia smell. And um, it's predominant mostly in the evening to attract these pollinating moths. The leaves of this orchid are, you know, somewhat succulent and the spikes come from each individual leaf. So growing this orchid in southeast Texas has been relatively easy. I will put a link in the upper right hand corner of the screen um, for the video where I actually transferred this particular orchid into this clay planter. And over the course of this last growing season, it has really adapted to this clay planter um, really well. So let me talk a little bit more about what it is potted in. So inside this clay planter, there's uh, some coarse bark as well as some large sponge rock. But in the corners of this clay planter, I also stuffed some packing peanuts. So what's on the inside is very um, light and airy. And uh, you can tell that the roots of this orchid have adapted um, well to attaching to this clay planter. Now, in the heat of the summer, I probably did water this orchid maybe twice a week, and it was able to withstand um, the high temperature in my area, you know, sometimes easily approaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. Um, as long as it was not in direct, direct sunlight, it did just fine. Um, and I would say probably it was early October when this particular spike started to develop on this uh, new leaf growth. And, you know, it was a very odd growing season here for us. I've mentioned that several times in other videos this year, but I had to bring all of my orchids in earlier than expected. And this spike was beginning to develop at that time, but had not gotten um, too far along. So I brought this orchid in under the grow lights and the spike continued to develop. And now, you know, towards the end, middle of December to the end of December, it uh, has started to open its buds. So, uh, you know, 
I, I have been successful getting this one to bloom. However, um, if you read about this orchid, these are typically late summer to early fall bloomers and mine is just, you know, maybe a month, month and a half, two months uh, delayed beyond that typical blooming season. Now, this particular plant I had hoped would have another bloom spike developing on this leaf right here, but it does look like that one is maybe starting to blast back a bit and will probably not develop. So I think what will have to happen for this uh, orchid to bloom again for me is for it to uh, put on new growth as soon as this blooming cycle is over. And then this time next year, uh, hopefully there will be more than just one leaf that is setting a bloom spike. So that kind of concludes um, what this species orchid is about, its native growing environment, as well as how I have successfully grown this um, in my climate here in Southeast Texas. Now, you know, during the winter months, um, I probably am down to watering maybe once every two weeks. So um, I have cut back on the watering somewhat. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or learned something new. And the subscribe button will be coming up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thanks so much for watching and talk to you next time.